Hey there, it's me, the Zen Mommy, and I'm here to help you with spiritual awakening and ascension and guiding you through the healing of the mind, body, and soul. Firstly, I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers. I appreciate you for subscribing to my channel. And anybody who's watching my videos for the first time and you're not a subscriber yet, there's a button down there that says subscribe, or down there. <laughs> and there's a little bell. And the bell, if you click that, it will notify you every time I upload a video. Anyways, um, thank you for joining me on this journey. Um, right now, um, I have a topic. Um, I'm not using the topic drawer because this one is going to be an update. So I'm taking you on my journey for my move to Florida. Okay. So I did a couple of live sessions. And one of the things I've been going through is I needed to move. And I'm trying to start this business. I'm on unemployment and i don't have a verifiable income and so all of these things happen and i still need to find a place to move and when th it seemed impossible and for some reason i've been guided to florida for a while now and uh, since november when my sister was like oh one day i'll go to miami i loved it there and i was just like you know what i would go with you too i just want a new life and we want a new experience right and that's what i said and it's been on my mind ever since then i started uh, i met a few people there and then um, I realized recently, last week I went to Florida just to visit, to find a place and to visit some friends and vacation. And I had left all the phone numbers at home of all the places I was supposed to check out. And I was thinking, I'm just gonna stay here. And so when I didn't, um, then, so, then I got a phone call and the phone call was like pretty much, off, I had a place for rent and a job. And out of the blue, out of amazing, I feel like, okay, wait, this has to be a sign. I was about to change my mind, right? And so, just wanted to update you on that part, okay? So here we are. Um, the apartment fell through for me, and so now I have a plane ticket on May 5th to go to Florida, and I don't have a place to stay. Well, I may have found another rental, um, and so that, I guess I'm gonna talk about that. So two issues that came up since the, um, since, since the last video. <laughs> First issue is my daughter and I, we had it out. She doesn't want me to move. And you know what? This is really tough for me because I love my little girl. Um, and the reason that we're having this issue, so she turned 19 and she's moving in with, she moved in with her boyfriend a few months ago. And when I started talking about Florida, I guess she really didn't believe me until last month. And then all of a sudden it's like, you're being selfish, blah, 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 blah. You're taking my brother away. You're taking my family away, blah, 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 blah. And so I was, that's one of the reasons why I had already, I had booked my ticket, but I had one of the reasons why I decided to stay. I'm like, okay, you know what? So here's the thing between me and my daughter, okay? So Storm's father, my ex-husband, was the toxic narcissist energy vampire. And I talk about him on this channel, and I'll link a video if you wanna know more about dealing with toxic narcissistic people. But anyways, he came into my life at the time when she was in high school. You have to understand that my daughter, see, because I was an orphan, I never felt like that I would get love. And I really wanted kids because I knew that was a guaranteed way to have my family in love. So my baby was my heart. Summer, my daughter, we did everything together. You know, we, we I was a single mom and everything. Like, and I had all of these plans for her to go to college. I wanted her to run for president every year. She made president and I helped her with her campaign and everything. And I was like, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. Like, I was definitely one of those typical parents that tried to plan out their kid's life based on what they thought. And also, um, also I was one of those parents that I had this bad life, I'm giving you a so much better life. I'm gonna give you a family, I didn't have a family. So I never did find a, a man to have a family, but I wanted to give her siblings. That was important to me, but in church we weren't allowed to have kids, you know. Um, so I couldn't have a kid at that church. And so I didn't, you know, at one point I was thinking I would just, um, you know, I'll adopt. I mean, not adopt. I will um, go to the sperm bank and get, you know, a donor. They had like this bank in San Francisco, and I had looked it up, and it wasn't too expensive. I, I thought about that. Like I thought about this deeply. I, I believed I was meant to be a mom, and I wanted to give my daughter a, a, a sibling. I wanted to give her a family. So, comes along as I meet this guy, this very toxic guy. I didn't know he was toxic. I was fresh out of the church sheltered i didn't know anything about like the ghetto the streets um, uh, the drugs and drug dealers and, and and like all of the toxic things that can go on in a low vibrational community 
okay? So I met this guy who was handsome, good looking, charming to begin with, had a bunch of kids, and claimed that he, from the moment he saw me, I was the one, that I was a soulmate. And quickly, I always wanted a family, okay? So he played on to that, he knew that about me. He knew I wanted a family, he knew I loved church, so he was volunteering at a church. He manipulated his way into my life, and I loved this man, of course. I wanted a family, I took all his kids, four kids in. And during this time, I didn't realize this man was even toxic to those kids. In fact, I found out those kids wasn't even his later. And I was just taking care of all these people while he was committing a fraud. And he was sitting there ruining me and my daughter's relationship. Like it was just getting to the point where it would be like so toxic that I felt like I was, my energy was completely drained by him. I couldn't give to my daughter. And when I tried to spend time with my daughter, he um, would make up some dramatic excuse and would always hold my attention. And so here my baby girl is suffering and I'm entering into this numb mind frame. Like, so you get to a point where someone is so toxic and they're treating you so bad and you feel so trapped because you somehow got mentally trapped in this relationship. I, I, I felt like I was a walking zombie that things were happening. My daughter was hurting. I no longer could see her hurting. She was running for, like I said, I had her running for president. She ran president like twice. And then all of a sudden she stopped going to school as much. She started doing bad in school. We had to move a few times. And after that, like, it just got to the point where he was just so toxic. And we got into fights over this and he just completely like split our relationship up. And so I guess I'm um, saying I didn't even mean to go off into that and I really apologize. Um, I said all that to say is I have great guilt about this. I feel like, you know, when my baby daughter girl needed me the most, what was I doing? I was wrapped up with some toxic man, letting him manipulate and control me. I absolutely hate myself for that. You know, I, I when she said that and she was like, you're making the decisions, blah, 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 you did, this. you know, you left me with that. And I'm thinking, you know what? I need to stay, you know? I can't abandon her. I don't want her to feel like that. I, I feel guilty. And I did try to look for a place out here. And I did try to find another job out here because like, there was nothing here. Everything, I, like the doors were closed. Like I found an apartment in an area that was pretty much worse than the area I lived in when I was with my ex. And all I could think about, how could I go to that area where crackheads are on the corner with my baby, with my son, just because, and it, because the, rent, the rent, and the rent wasn't even cheap. And so I, I looked and I tried to find places and I had given up and then I went to Florida, then all of a sudden the place and the job presented it. So I, and I felt the energy there. I felt alive in Florida. I felt like this is where I'm meant to be. I have so many signs of synchronicities going there. And I'm like, I come back and I tell her like, look, I said, I can't find a place here. And I found a place here. I have 10 days. I have to leave. I have to leave soon. And I, what am I supposed to do? You know, I can't just stay here. There's nowhere like I can stay. You know, I don't want to go sleep on somebody's couch or get, um, I don't know, a hotel or a shelter. I, I don't want to do all of that, right? When I don't have to. And also, I'm not happy here. Now, that's a big deal. But still, I'm willing to, I was willing to put my happiness aside to be here, right? But I, it just came down to it that I can't be here. And I feel like, you know, and I even question, is the universe really guiding me away if my daughter's hurting? You know, I do have those questions. Am I... Um, let's make sure I'm not going too long. Okay, nine minutes. Um, and so, like, it's really hard for me. And so I, I told her that, and she seems like, well, if you don't have a choice, right? And so I talked to her again yesterday, and I was just like, you know, you're not messaging me. You're not talking to me. You want me to stay, but you don't never call or talk to me or visit. Like, why would I? Why? You don't even call. And when it comes to holidays, you're with your boyfriend's family, not me. And so I was just like, and so she lashed back at me. We had a little text message fight got ugly and I was just like I was just like first of all you know like I was going out you know how to you know how as a mom is you know like look I have to take care of my business you ain't gonna talk to me like that blah 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 right like I really have been confused and I don't know what to do like I can't 
I, I would feel completely secure about this move if it wasn't like this one thing I felt like that was holding me back. And now I have to make this decision and I, I'm, I'm, and it's hard for me, like I have to, like I have a plane ticket already and I know my destiny or my journey is calling me out there. So what do I do next, okay? I'm like, do I just trust the universe that it all will fall into place and that we'll be back together again? Or do I pray for a healing towards her to heal her for what we've been through in the past? Like, th this is like the journey I'm going through with my daughter right now. And I ended up messaging her and, you know, I realized that she called me unempathetic. She said that I was selfish. And I'm like, I'm empathetic, selfish. I'm like, you have no idea how hard I've tried. I've tried, you know, this is like a tough decision for me. And, but I do realize like there was parts of me that were un empathetic. Um, there's the part, like I look back and I understand what ha has happened, okay? The, I was her mother and a man came in and came between us. This is why I'm saying like, I, I, I wanna, I, I, this is what I'm saying like, I can't accept that I allowed somebody to come between us. It, it hurts so much that I have kind of numbed myself and I'm scared to like address it and think about it. it. It really hurts. I feel like I destroyed my daughter and like I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to get back. And I'm not trying to soar off and be Zen Mommy and have the spiritual channel when my child is hurting. So that's where I'm stuck at. I don't know what to do from this point. And so. So let's see, we're at nine minutes, 11 minutes. Okay, so the other issue with the move, and I'm gonna do this real quick, is I found another place possibly, but it's more expensive than I wanna pay. And so I'm like, should I do it? See, I wanted to have low, low, low rent so that I can just sit back for a couple of months and like focus on Zen Mommy and getting the right situation going. I don't wanna have to like go find another job at a corporate America and then like, I was like stressed, right? So I'm also seeing that, is this also the lack vibration, me worrying about being able to make this rent, you know? Or like, I know that once I'm established and stuff, I, I can make that rent, right? But there's a part of me that kind of feels like, oh, but see, there again, that's the worry and the lack. And so when it comes to manifesting, I have to, I, I, the message I'm getting is I have to, I have to step out on faith. Okay, just like me just flying out to Florida and not really knowing if that was going to happen, that was kind of faith in the universe did deliver. So believing that, not feeling like I have lack, moving into the vibration of abundance, knowing that the universe is supporting me, that it's not leading me to Florida to be homeless, right? And so it's just like working out of that mind frame into that mind frame. So those are the two issues I'm dealing with on my journey right now. Um, I wanted to share that as an update for you guys. and. Um, Let's see what happens next. Um, so the next 10 days, I guess I'll be packing my stuff and getting ready to go. It's just, I've never come this close to something and not have a for sure situation. But that's one thing I'm learning with this journey is we can't be for sure. We can't plan for a future. You know, we have to always have an open unknown destination so that we can open up the field of possibilities. <laughs> that's pure potentiality. So once you open up the field of possibilities, anything can come my way. So if I say, look, I can only move to Oakland into this ghetto neighborhood, then I close off all of my field of potential possibilities. Let's just say I move to, to, to Florida and I actually take off my business. I have people there that are willing to help me. I have a support system, at like all at once, like, like Soul Family has all emerged to just like the universe has created, like I've created this. You have to understand we're the creator of our realities. I somehow created this reality in Florida where I have these people, these soul family members, people who have met me, who love me, who want to embrace me and help me and, and, and be a part of their reality. And you know, I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the whole journey of the awakening and the manifestation process because I'm seeing it come to life in my, in my life. And it, it's not a whole all at once I'm a millionaire type thing, but it is a journey, okay? There's steps and steps and steps. So that's the one thing is we have to learn how to be appreciative for each step. And we have to move out of the lack vibration, which that's a, a, a big job for me. 
So maybe we'll do more, we'll, I'll talk more about what am I gonna do next to get out of this vibration of worrying about what if I can't make the rent in a few months, okay? And because I chose this more expensive place. And, and getting out of that vibration and trusting in the universe that the universe will support me and take care of me. And trusting the universe with my daughter and, find, and, 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 and having some kind of healing or some, see I know that the universe that anything is possible. Anything that's a possibility is a possibility. I know that the universe can make it so that number one, either I have way more money where I can have her visit more, or I can have places, a place in both places, or I can, or maybe she'll decide to move out there. Or, you know, you never know. That's what the, the, the great thing about the unknown is not planning for a future. You give the universe an opportunity to bring anything into your existence, to support your desires and whatever you need. All right, thank you for watching. Peace and love. Namaste.